we are live. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome. It always takes us by surprise. I don't know why we press the go live button and somehow we're still surprised. Um, I'm Orna Ross. That's Sasha Black. Hi, Sasha. Hello. And we are here for the fiction and nonfiction um, Ask Ally Salon, which is kindly sponsored by Izard Inc. And uh, this evening we're going to be talking about the issue of author platform. What is it? Uh, what are the different kinds of platform you can have? Authors get really puzzled about platform. Um, it causes a lot of kind of head scratching and navel gazing. So we're hoping that we will take the um, mystique away from it because it really is something that's really quite simple, quite practical and very important in terms of um, developing your ability to sell books and to reach readers and, and to know what you're doing to, to kind of stay centred and stay core. So, um, yeah, people are starting to come in. If you have any questions, folks, about um, platform, particularly your own platform, any aspects that you're wondering about or, you know, that you're not sure of, please do use the comment box for questions. Just a minor, slightly unrelated note. Are you recording this? Just to make sure. Thank you. I was not. <laughs> Neither was I. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we have to do a local recording for, um, as well as doing this live video recording, we have to do a local audio recording for the wonderful Howard for our podcast. And we both forgot. OK. Well remembered, Sasha. Thank you. OK. So we are here. And um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about author platform. How do you think about it? How do you describe it to yourself? Oh, that's such a such a hard question. So in my mind, platform is anything that I do um, using my, I guess, author self, my author voice, it, that's public. So it might be including my platform. Uh, sorry, my platform. Yes, of course, it's including my platform, my website. Sorry. Um, it might be including my podcast it might be including articles that i write anything that puts my voice into a public arena um and sheds light or, or brings draws attention to my books my products my services me as a brand that is my platform so i think that's why so many people find it so complex and so complicated to understand i i still struggle sometimes getting my head around platform because it, it is essentially everything that we are doing in a public arena and so you can't really put your finger on one tangible thing that is a platform it is it is the gestalt in, a, in in essence it is the the whole is more than the sum of the parts the parts being your social media your youtube your podcast your books your speaking or whatever it is that you're doing creates something that is more um, than all of those little bits which is your platform but but i'm interested in how you see this because you, I think that, you know about this, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I agree. I think it's one of these things also that kind of means different things to different people, maybe. And I, I actually find it useful to look at the metaphor itself of platform and think about, you know, well, I'm a historical fiction writer, so I'm always thinking about the old days. And, you know, in order for people to speak in public situations, they had to be elevated up onto a platform. If you if you're kind of standing level with everybody and you're talking out as loud as you can, you're, you're going to reach a few people. But if you get a platform and you get up high and you get a megaphone or a microphone, now you reach more people. And, and that's what the platform is. Anything that kind of lifts you up and booms you out um, it contributes to this thing we call all the platform. And you know somebody has a fantastic platform when a lot of people know about them so also we we will talk about all the different things that contribute to to platform but in terms of understanding it in the old days again before a, a widespread digital self-publishing your platform as an author and i mean i lived through these times your platform as an author was basically whatever your publisher managed to make happen for you so you know, what they told the sales reps who went into the bookstores and whether that message got across and convinced people that they should put in a decent sized order 
that was a big part of, of your platform. And then whether they managed to get it reviewed in the major uh, media outlets, that was another part of your platform. And thirdly, whether you got some chat show appearances or feature pieces in the press or whatever. It didn't really go beyond that. Now we have, yeah, and it was all scarcity, you know, getting those slots, there was big competition for them. It very much depended on what other book came out at the same time as yours. So, you know, for platform reasons, publishers were always juggling the schedule and, you know, making sure you didn't come out at the same time as Margaret Atwood or whatever, because you wouldn't have a hope of getting a, a slot anywhere, that kind of thing. It was all about scarcity. Now it's the opposite problem. As we try to define our platform, it's all about abundance. There's 600 million thousand things you can do every day to elevate your platform. Which ones are you going to choose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I th there's so many things that I could uh, elaborate on there. But the thing that I love most now is that we are so empowered. There are so many options, but also that platform creation is in our the ball is in our court so to speak because we have the ability to choose what we're going to do where you know like you say pick and choose between those 600 million things that we we can possibly do rather than being um at the whims and fancies of a publisher and their marketing budget or not so to speak um but in terms of i just thought i might explain how i choose the things um and that is by um sticking to three principles or values i suppose so i run my platform very much on on these three principles and i think i've said this before on, on one of these podcasts but um I try to make sure that everything I do, everything that uh, when I put out my voice in whatever format, I match one or more or all three of the, the following principles. So being knowledgeable, being motivational for others and being a little bit rebellious. And um, that permeates both my podcast, my my. Um, article writing or, or whatever, all the way through to my books. Now, very much so in my nonfiction books, that, that is probably quite a good summary of the voice in those books, but it's now I'm now pushing my fiction under that as well. And it's because it works better with my platform. My platform, that is my platform. Those three principles are what I put out. It is what helps to draw the reader and, and uh, customers to, to me. And therefore, I want my fiction to match that as well. But I know that's not the case for you, is it, and your platform? Well, it hasn't been, but I, I think, again, it's it's probably something. So what's happening to me at the moment is I'm doing the opposite. I'm I'm kind of um, separating out my platforms. So I think if I have one word that kind of encompasses everything, it's probably inspirational. So always trying to inspire change and and, you know, whatever people want in their lives, kind of uh, facilitating that empowerment is in everything. And I think that is in the fiction as well. Mm. But my fiction tends to be dark darker, my poetry tends to be lighter, um, and then nonfiction, I guess, is is very much around um, author guides and, and creative guides. So there are definitely similarities, but what has happened to me in the past is that everything was kind of all in together because I did see it all as my voice. And then in recent times, and anyone who's a regular listener will be probably bored hearing me talk about this uh, at the moment, but in recent times, I've been um, stratifying, pulling each of these out and using different social media, uh, media even for different aspects of the platform. So for poetry, using Instagram, uh, for the, uh, the creative stuff, using Twitter um, and fiction for Facebook, you know, and just trying to make that change happen. And I think then, when I have kind of separated it all out, then I'd be able to integrate it back together. So mm. it's, it is because I do think if you, you know, if you think about a um, Stephen King book, you kind of, you just know what you're going to get. You don't know the story and stories are in all sorts of different settings, but you kind of have an expectation around what you're going to get. Same with, um, Margaret Atwood and a lot of this stuff where is where you know you've got to understand where marketing and platform are overlap but then come apart platform and marketing is not the same thing your marketing feeds your platform and I think a good rule of thumb when when thinking about platform and strengthening it um which is what you're talking about by getting these 
qualities that define us as, as authors and each get our books. A good thing to think about is that each promotional campaign that you do for a particular book that you think about platform, how as well as getting that book out to the readers that you want to buy it, think also about how do I actually promote this in a way that also really expands my platform, elevates me up higher or booms me out further. And um, I think when you start thinking about that, actually your promotional campaigns become richer and wider and than just, you know, the obvious, which, you know, take out an ad and keep your fingers crossed kind of thing, put the book cover up and get it out there, all of that stuff we're doing. But I think bringing platform and thinking about yourself and it's all wrapped up with other things you and I have been talking about over the past few months as well, your value to the reader, your own values as a person and as an author. So there is a lot in it. So folks, yeah, do, um, do ask your questions if you have specific uh, issues around your own platforms with people in from all over as usual, Canada and New Zealand and everywhere in between the long way around. So uh, great to have you all here, but do use the chat box if you have any particular questions for us. Um, so what So, uh, what are the most important parts or components of a pl platform? Platform. <laughs> platform. <laughs> <laughs> Going on oh, English on me there. Um, well, yeah, so I guess there are, the first one is the, the same sort of component that is key to every single aspect of being a good publisher is the first thing, you've got to have good books to play with. So number one is working on, on your books until you feel I'm really proud of them, they are really fantastic. Then it's about displaying your work and finding the way that you can put it out there in, in a way that suits you and suits your marketing um, campaign, your marketing budget, your weekly routine um, and your promotional, whatever you're going to do for a particular book that you're working on. And then thirdly, back to what we were talking about, I think it was last time at the time before the right reader, you know, getting the right kind of interest from the right reader. So if you if you drop any of those, it's a it's a, you know, a three legged stool. If you drop any of those, you're going to kind of wobble. So it's a matter of making sure that all of those things are in place. And to do that, you need to think about your work, not just as the person who makes the books, you know, puts the books together, you've got to think also of yourself as the person who puts them out there, the marketeer, but you've also got to think of yourself as the manager of the whole thing, the, the process, because you really will become overwhelmed if you don't narrow this down to what suits you, what suits your, your weekly routine, your monthly routine, your quarterly routine one of the things that, that works very well for a lot of authors is to have a quarterly campaign around a particular book. So to pick a book, if you've got one coming out in that in that time frame, great, that's the one you use and you build your launch campaign around that. But you don't need a, a launch book to do a campaign on a book. So each quarter to pick one of your titles and to put, you know, some juice behind it and to make a plan across that quarter as to how you're going to do that in a platform building sort of way. Um, Adam has popped in with a question saying, it seems like building a platform requires really putting yourself out there. Any suggestions for spreading awareness about my new book or books without making it all about me? Not to be too much of a tortured artist, but honestly, I, I'd honestly like the work to stand on its own and not make it all about me. Um, I, I can throw in some things if, if that's okay. So first of all, um, I would say that uh, it's, whilst we have been talking about the platform in terms of our platform as an author, when you are looking at um, your books, I tend to think about the reader, not necessarily about me. So for my fiction, I will look at the themes, the perhaps the tropes, and I will be talking about and promoting those. So for example, you know, um, I could send an email or do a post or an article, 10, tro uh, 10 books that have a uh, haters to lovers type trope. And if that's what my book 
uh, trope is, then obviously I'm going to put my book in there and that will help to promote it. So I, I look at what is it that readers want uh, or will get from my book? What are the themes? Is it is it a romance theme? And um, is it the romance element that people will be coming to my book for? Is it something about a very niche form of fantasy or a niche form of, you know, a, a right down to a magician's thing? Perhaps that's the aspect or element in your book that you promote and you talk about things that readers would like about that genre rather than talking about yourself. And then for nonfiction, I look at... Um, I look at the problem that I'm solving for for readers. So you don't have to necessarily talk about um, yourself or your personal life um, on your platform. You can talk about the contents and the themes and the problems if you're writing nonfiction that you are helping people to solve. So I hope that has answered that a little bit. I don't know if you want to add something. Yeah, to just kind of say yay to every everything you said and to say that it's up to you, Adam. You know, some authors love to make it about them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that can be particularly people who have maybe a performance dimension to their work. So, you know, performance poets or people who re love to read their work and read very well or have an actor in, in an acting background, something like that, or just are genuinely you know people who love to just kind of sit there and chat and be themselves and talk to their tribe um of readers and are really really comfortable in that position sitting uh, with a you know looking into the green light of a video chatting away and they're very comfortable with it being about them that's great for them you don't want to be like that you don't have to be and that's what we were saying about the 600 million things it's really up to you to choose how are you going so you know we've told you what the elements of a platform are then you think about you your own unique way you know what made you write these books in the first place and then how you create a platform out of that and to echo um, and hopefully not labor the point but to echo what Sasha was saying if you think about your value to the reader then that takes care of that in a way because once you think and, and that's for fiction and poetry as well what is it that they are looking for from you and I always think of um Maya Angelou I think it was who said you know they'll forget what you told them but they'll never forget how you made them feel so if you think about what is the feeling that you want to evoke in the reader when they hear your name. So when they hear, um, you know, that, that new book is out, they kind of have that that feeling rises up in them because they've got some sense of what you're about. So that's why you need that clarity. We were talking about it, that, that Sasha was talking about at the beginning, those qualities to your work and your platform that kind of eventually after time they speak speak for you in a way that's what people think of when they think of you and it's great if it's close to you in personality but sometimes actually writers have platforms that are really quite different to who when you meet them you go oh my god <laughs> they are so different to what I thought they were because you're getting the platform and when you meet the human being behind it it's actually somebody you know it's, it's Wizard of Oz moment it's a it's a somebody who's completely different not necessarily always a disappointment but very different to the platform and that's fine too there are no rules here i think that's the most important thing to say getting comfortable if you're uncomfortable doing anything it should not form part of your platform you really should be comfortable with whatever you're doing and more than comfortable you should feel good about it you should be bringing the same sort of creative spirit that creates the books should be going into the platform they're intimately connected and if there's a kind of a gap between them then that's a gap where you kind of fall down and not not be known you know you've got to integrate those two together mm -hmm. lots of questions coming in yes <laughs> OK, let's have a look at a few. And um, so hopefully that that helps, Adam. Bob is wondering about somebody to do Amazon advertising. Slightly different question, Bob. And um, though I see somebody's jumped in later on down in the chat who does. So if you guys want to, to get together and have a chat. Bonnie um, asks, do you find live Q&As are an effective way to reach out to fans? I'm considering doing that once a month on my fan page. I think it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Video or audio um, or even text, actually. Um, yeah, that's a great idea if, if, it, if 
you feel comfortable with it and you like that idea, then go for it. Absolutely. One thing I will add with that is I find them extremely effective for my nonfiction and I find them slightly less effective with my fiction. But I think that's only because it takes slightly longer to build for the fiction. So um, don't I don't know if you write fiction or nonfiction, but uh, just to say, don't be disheartened if it's sort of crickets at first. Um, one tip that I uh, always like to use in order to appease my nerves is to get questions in advance so that you aren't waiting for questions on the day um, and that also gives you the ability to prepare answers in advance and then if on the day you feel comfortable you can then open it up because people will start throwing questions in and um, yeah I just find that that helps to give the Q&A some structure as well. Yeah great and I, and I think back to that thing of crickets whatever you start to build your platform it's it's likely at first that you know your platform isn't very high and your microphone doesn't boom very far and um, you know you begin with tens of people and you move into hundreds and then you move into thousands and then you move into tens of thousands and if you're lucky somewhere along the line and probably unplanned something will spike and will just give you that bit of elevation that makes all the difference but you never know when that's going to come and at the beginning when you're trying to build a platform you're basically an unknown um, nobody knows you. And, you know, another word for platform is fame, really. You're you're trying to be known to people so that they know what you stand for as an author, what your books stand for and, um, you know, for the reader. So it takes time to build. It's not something that happens overnight. And I my own personal experience is that when you're using a social media a medium for the first time, it takes a good six months before you actually settle in and know, you know, you, you kind of um, experimenting and exploring and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't and getting comfortable with it. You need you will have a period I talked about not doing things that are um, make you uncomfortable. I'm going to contradict myself slightly now and say that uh, probably all of this will make you a little bit uncomfortable. That's, but it's creative discomfort that I'm talking about here. So it's discomfort, it's the discomfort you feel of putting yourself out there, especially if there's no response, which is a different thing to I'm deeply uncomfortable with doing video and I'm never going to be OK with it. So you can expect to feel normal, creative discomfort if you're trying to grow yourself, if you're trying to expand who you are as a person, as an author, as a, you know, as a publisher, then growing pains will happen. That's part of the process. Um, but that's a different kind of discomfort to, to what I was talking about earlier on. Um, somebody was asking about quarterly plan. Rene, do you have resources you could point us to as an example of how to create a viable author business plan? Yes, um, actually, I'm actually running a business planning group, Renee, and I'll be in touch with you. If you drop your email address here into the chat, I'll send you a note about that. Um, we're meeting monthly and, and doing quarterly plans together. So if you want to um, be in touch, I can tell you a bit more about that. What does a quarterly business plan look like for an indie author? It looks very simple. It's really important to keep it really, really simple. Just what do I want to achieve? A rough idea of what, how you will express that in a measurable way. So you will be able to say, yes, I, I succeeded or no, I didn't succeed. And a way of evaluating what's working and not and how and why. So that at the end of the quarter, even if you haven't done exactly what you set out to do, you know so much more that you're taking into the next quarter because good quarters and bad quarters. Absolutely. I was just going to add two things. I believe we had, um, as an Ally member, you have access to the um, lifetime access whilst you are a member to the self-publishing advice conference. And I believe that we had a session I think it was the last conference, it could have been the conference before, um, on business planning. And so there is an hour session. Uh, if you log into the member portal on the Alliance of Independent Authors.org, you can navigate to advice conference and then find the login details there. And the yes. second thing. It's, that sorry, I was, it's in, I'll just follow up on that. It's in the business conference, which was the last one, and it's Kimberly Grabas. Uh, there we go. Session. 
yeah yeah I'd forgotten about that yeah good 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 memory <laughs> um, and the only other thing that I was going to say is I try and do all of those things with my quarterly plans but I also um and this may or may not be helpful at all um it's just something I personally find helpful I separate out my um plan into um topics or themes so I do a creating what am I creating this quarter what am I marketing or launching this this comma this quarter and um, then business what am I doing to elevate my business this quarter and that might be business foundations it could be growth it could be any it could be boring accounting stuff whatever but yeah those are the three categories and I tried to have a balance across across the three because if I over heavy the creative side I get burned out for the next quarter and also I'm just not going to be able to complete that whereas each of those um, topics or themes accesses a different part of my brain so I can in a way add more to my plan <laughs> yeah it does it's different things it, somehow it does because you are using different parts of the brain and because all of those aspects are essential parts of, of growth not just growing your platform but growing your profits and growing your sales um it, it really comes together very nicely when you realize that it's when you're concentrating too much on the making part and i'm thinking that the other stuff is going to happen by itself mm. and that you actually find yourself in a bit of a slump so yeah the, getting that three legged thing together very often so much in in indie author land is about the, the, the three dimensions of something and, and that's another one seth has a really good question about free books and platforms so i'm just going to read it um, i wonder how much you think giving away free books and having lower priced books affects your platform when starting out it's tempting to have lower prices but do you think you are implicitly saying something about the quality of your work when you do this it's difficult to strike a balance between finding readers and attaching monetary value to your books absolutely and a great question i i think the, the way to manage this is free is great if it's used strategically, you know, so you're using it for a particular reason. When you start off, if readers haven't heard about you and they don't know anything about you and giving them a free book is a way for them to try you at low, low or no risk. So a very cheap book or a free book allows them to do that. Selling all your books at too low a price is a completely different thing. That's a devaluing of, you know, of, of your work and, uh, by implication of all our work, you know, so we rely on each other to hold reasonable prices for the work that we do. And arguably books are far too cheap for what they are, for how long they take to create and put together and and all of that. So once you're using free in a strategic sort of way, I think it's fantastic. Also managing your price, understanding that some platforms are much more price sensitive than others. So Amazon is the most price sensitive platform. It's all about price on Amazon. They've got a big um, sort of principle that you can't buy your stuff cheaper anywhere else and so on. Apple and Kobo far less price sensitive. And in fact, you may put readers off, which is what, what Seth is asking about. You may actually make readers think your book is a certain kind of book. You know, you've got to be really careful. Pricing has to be part of the overall platform where you're pitching yourself in the market, who your readers are. Are they hungry readers that read, you know, voraciously and therefore, you know, need books to be cheap because they're buying so many of them? Or are they people who actually value a book more if it's 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 if it's more um robust more pages and you know higher price but in their perception better value a better value read yeah and i also think um as well as it being platform sensitive i also think it's genre sensitive so for example with non-fiction it's very unusual to find anything um you know sort of at the 99p or free level and it's much more likely that you will see things at the 499, 599, 699 because nonfiction is with informational based. And for that reason, I can't give you any other reasons, it is seen as more valuable. Whereas somewhere like romance, which is heavily, heavily populated with a lot of content, you will often find books at 99p and readers have that expectation. Uh, but also um, lots of, and I'm not saying everybody because obviously not everybody, but lots of romance readers have lots of books and also 
it's it's the um, what's the word the the units you 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 generate lots of unit turnover in order to get people through your um, series. I can't think of the word that I'm trying to say, but you, hopefully you know what I'm trying to say. Great. So I'm just going to we're, we were already out of time. Just going to fly through some of these questions here. So um, Ebony is has pointed out. She's asked what are ways to get other people to promote platform your fans your critics etc and i think that is actually something that we might look at next time as something in and of itself mm -hmm. how to actually because yes you're absolutely right it isn't about you just being one person constantly doing stuff yourself harnessing other people is essentially your platform is other people it is people talking about you either organically or because you've helped them along to do that so we might look at the whole use of um other people in our marketing um in a, in our next session judy wants to know am i being too ambitious doing a blog and newsletter for fiction and non-fiction feeling resistance with the fiction blog while in the finishing stages of non-fiction and when i've hardly any fiction followers doesn't feel like a good use of my time when i only have one book out i know chicken and egg you can you can build a list, Julie, and give them something that isn't necessarily um, a newsletter. You know, if if the newsletter isn't coming and as you say, you've just got one book and, and so on, there isn't an awful lot to put into it and you're not enjoying the writing and filling them in with the where you're at, then, yeah, think about other ways that you can do or else have a newsletter that goes to when well, no, you can't actually I'm thinking about no your your audiences are two completely different yeah so just have one newsletter if it's too much at the moment until you have three books in place I think you're probably right that it's a it's a lot of work at this point in time for probably not a, a huge return any do you have any thoughts on that Sasha well the only thing I was going to say is once you've written the content if you're writing evergreen content it doesn't go away so you can re-promote it or repurpose it um, and uh, use it again, especially as your audience and your platform and your mailing list or your blog or whatever grows. So it's never wasted. That's that's just something that I wanted to add. Fair enough. Absolutely. Is it essential to have a Facebook page and or a Twitter account? It's not, Roz asks, it's not essential to do anything, Roz. It's don't have either of them unless you've got a plan for them. So you should know before you open a social media account, you should actually know here's how this account is going to help me to sell books. Here is my strategy. And that doesn't mean I'm going to tell people about my books all day long because so that won't work you need to do some reading about social media how it works and how it sells books and the ways in which you use it to do that before you you have it it isn't essential but i will say if you're not going to use social media then what are you going to use you need to have something so if you you know it is definitely a fantastic opportunity for authors to be able to directly reach their readers through social media but it doesn't mean that you have to do it no um, a few people saying they're interested in the planning group. I will definitely be back in relation to that to you all. So don't worry about that. Um, I have one free book, two at tonight and the rest are one. And, and yeah, exactly. So different and free book definitely gets me sales. That's Morgan just talking about her strategy. And, and that's exactly it. Having a, a strategy where not all, all of your books are priced the same. You've, you're actually, again, thinking, what's my plan for this book? How is this feeding the platform? How is it going to grow the platform? How does it feed into the other work? And for all of this, your main job, of course, always is getting the words, as Sasha says, and, you know, getting the words each day, getting them down, getting more product, more books um, and more lead magnets and whatever it is that you need in order to make your um, to make your stuff work. Um, so Julie takes your point and I think she's happy with that. And I think that is it, unless there's anything you would like to add, Sasha. No, I don't think so. <laughs> OK, we had we had um, a few other bits and pieces, but I think yeah. we're out of time. So we will get to those next time. So thank you very much, folks. Uh, do add in further questions into the chat box later on if you want to. We will get to them today and tomorrow. And this session will be out on podcast and um, the replay will be there if you want to list again. And we will be putting it out on podcast on Friday on the blog. So um, until next time. Happy writing and happy publishing. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.